How can a refrigeration system lower temperatures? Let's think about what it means to cool down something. If you spread alcohol on your skin, you feel it cool. The alcohol takes heat from the skin when it evaporates. Now, let's see what will happen using some ethyl which evaporates quickly. We poured some colored ethyl into the water in a Petri dish. The evaporating ethyl lowers the water temperature. But ethyl is not the only element that has this characteristic. Any substance on Earth takes heat from the surrounding substance when it transforms itself from a liquid to a gaseous form. This characteristic of substances is applied to the refrigeration system. You evaporate ethyl in a tube to take heat from the surrounding air. Having its heat taken away, the air in turn will remove heat from the room. That's the basic theory of the refrigeration system. But we can hardly afford to waste the evaporated ethyl. So, we somehow managed to recycle the used ethyl and liquefied for another process of evaporation. The processes are continuously repeated in each device, which makes up the refrigeration system. The cylinder is filled with evaporated ethyl. Then the gasified ethyl is compressed. The inner surface of the cylinder becomes wet. That is the result of the compressed gaseous ethyl releasing its own heat around it while being condensed and liquefied. Generally, when a gaseous body is compressed, the pressure and temperature are increased. And then, when the gas temperature is lowered by keeping a constant pressure, gas changes to a liquid. These characteristics are applied to the recycling system of the refrigeration system. The gasified ethyl is compressed. The compressed ethyl releases its heat around it. And it condensed and liquefied again. In this way, the ethyl repeats its own transformation. From liquid to gas. And from gas to liquid. This rotation is termed refrigerating cycle. In the actual refrigerating cycle of a car air conditioner, a liquefied gas called freon is used instead of ethyl. For easy evaporation, freon liquid is expanded at the expansion valve and sent to the evaporator. Freon in the evaporator evaporates taking heat from the surrounding object. The gasified freon is sucked into the compressor, where it is compressed to become high-temperature high-pressure gas. It is then transmitted to the condenser, which releases its heat around it, and again is liquefied. In this way the freon, repeat refrigerating cycles from the expansion valve to the evaporator. Now, we'll follow the processes by means of an infrared camera, especially designed to catch the surface temperature. Here we can see how the freon taking heat from the surrounding object at the evaporator. While in the condenser, high temperature freon is releasing heat. An agent, like freon which cools the neighboring substance while repeating, liquefaction and gasification, is termed refrigerant. The refrigerant should have the characteristic to be gasified or to be liquefied at normal temperatures. The graph here indicates the refrigerant characteristics. The curve follows the borderline figures at which the refrigerant is gasified or liquefied. Refrigerant, expanded by valve, now stays in the form of vapor at pressure 2.1 kg per square centimeter. 
and 0 degrees centigrade. It will be gasified when heat is taken by the evaporator. Meanwhile, the compressed refrigerant exists as a gas at a pressure of 12.8 kg per square centimeter, 68 degrees centigrade. When its heat is released by the condenser, it is liquefied. In other words, refrigerant at pressure 12.8 kg per square centimeter and 50 degrees centigrade is decompressed to pressure 2.1 kg per square centimeter by the expansion valve to turn into vapor at 0 degrees centigrade. And compressed in the compressor, it turns gaseous form, with its pressure increased to 12.8 kg per square centimeter and its temperature at which 68 degrees centigrade. In the condenser, it is condensed under the same pressure into a liquid, while 50 degrees centigrade, which is transmitted to the expansion valve. Refrigerants circulate in that way. Through the refrigerating system, repeating gasification and liquefaction, alternately, changing pressure and temperature. As you'll see, a refrigerating system is mounted on a car. Now let's take a brief look at each of the devices. The compressor is driven by the engine with a V-belt to circulate the refrigerant. The compressor compresses the refrigerant and sends it to the condenser, facilitating its condensation at the ambient temperature. Most of the compressors of car air conditioner perform suction compression with piston movements. The swash plate type compressor rotates an inclined plate on the shaft to cause piston movement. Its advantages include easy mounting, made by its cylindrical form, well-balanced design for minimal vibration and noise. One of the latest type compressors attracting wide attention is the rotary vane type compressor developed by Diesel Kiki. The model is an energy saving type, light in weight, and small in size with a minimum of vibration and noise. This rotary vane type compressor, consisting of an elliptic cylinder and a rotor with four vanes, performs suction compression. The condenser is set in front of the radiator. The condenser for car air conditioner is air-cooled by force convection. Cooling efficiency is enhanced by fins attached to the tube. The condenser is a component that cools and liquefies the high-temperature high-pressure refrigerants sent from the compressor. The expansion valve is set at the inlet of the evaporator. The expansion valve decompresses the high-pressure refrigerant by throttling, turning it into a fog-like vapor before sending it to the evaporator. The evaporator is a device in which the fog-like refrigerant takes the heat from the air inside a car as it evaporates. Nicely cooled air blows into the interior, this time moisture in the air also removed.